So the farm in the late 1800s goes from being a farm uh, for personal growth and family sustenance to a factory-driven machine. Um, it's a huge deal to have a farm that's going to make money in the late 1800s. And this all comes about because farmers begin to grow cash crops. They begin to grow crops that are meant to be sold to make money, not simply to sustain the, fa the family. So things like wheat and barley and corn and those sorts of things began to be grown in mass quantities. The farm also becomes mechanized. We have the uh, combine come about here. We have other sorts of mechanization, the plow um, that comes about that really makes farming a mechanized industry where we have things we can drive rather than have pulled by an ox or a horse to take care of farming. So farming becomes a much more efficient process in, uh, as time goes on. Now there are some problems with this. So the problems are farming is good when it's good. It's great when it's great, when the weather is right, when things are working, when the um, machines are all up and running. And things are really good for farmers. But one economic slip and everything goes downhill. One misstep in the economy, everything goes downhill. So what were the farmers fighting? They were fighting a couple of things. One is low prices. Supply and demand was playing a huge role here. There was too much supply on the market and not enough demand. So prices kept going down as there was more stuff available. Who's gonna pay a lot of money for potatoes when there's a ton of potatoes to choose from and competition in the marketplace? So supply and demand is going to play a big role here in lowering prices. You're also dealing with a deflated currency. There simply was not enough money to go around for the farmers. And a lot of them were mortgaged for, to buy their combines and their equipment and so forth. They were mortgaged to their eyeballs. And they didn't have the money to pay the banks back. So this became a real issue. There are other problems that the farmers face as well, and things that they really have no control over. Things like an invasion of grasshoppers or the cotton boll weevil. Who would have thought? Um, there were droughts and floods. Farmers cannot control the weather as much as they'd like to. So one year it might be bone dry, uh, or the next year it might flood in your field, and you couldn't control that, and your crops had to deal with whether or not they had enough water or too much water. Uh, and you hoped for the best. You, the government had also over-assessed a lot of these properties and were charging way too much in taxes to these farmers. Um, and then you had the issue of the trusts. And so there wasn't just a steel trust and an oil trust. There were fertilizer trusts and equipment trusts and seed trusts and so forth that would combine in order to put a stranglehold on the economy and monopolize the market um, and those made materials very expensive for the farmer to the point where a lot of them couldn't afford it. Then you had freight rates. It costs a lot of money to send your, your finished produce to the marketplace. And when you have so much of it, you really don't have a choice but to send it by rail. And those freight rates were huge. Now you also have farmers beginning to organize. And they're going to get together in an effort to make political and economic change in their world. So one of the things that they form in 1867, Oliver Kelly is going to form what's called the Grange. Now, in some farming communities, the Grange still exists today. There are a lot of Granges out west. And if you drive over to Fleetwood or Ole, uh, Pennsylvania, you'll find a Grange there as well. There's a Grange Hall in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. So these trusts or these um, organizations still exist today. Um, they were meant to help improve the social and economic life of the farmers, to give them something to do, to give them an education about how to properly farm in their area. So fertilizer companies would send a representative in and talk to the farmers about this is how you should use our fertilizer. This is what it works best on, and this is the condition it works best in. Seed companies would do that. Combine companies, John Deere, would send representatives in to talk about their equipment. This was all about education and social life. Fraternal activities falls under social life. They would have dances at the Grange. You'd have chicken pot pie dinners at the Grange. You would have whatever at the Grange. 
Um, and it was a way for farmers who lived a lot in isolation, especially their families, to come together in one place to have a good time. The People's Party, also known as the Populists. They're going to be a farmer's alliance. They're really going to work the farmer's angle in the next elections, coming up here through the turn of the century. Um, they're going to uh, really work hard to put their people into office. It doesn't work, but they work hard to, see, to try and make it happen. The People's Party is formed by Ignatius Donnelly, who was a multi-term congressman uh, who put together this uh, populist party. And then you have Mary Elizabeth Lease. And Mary Elizabeth Lease was a um, ardent supporter of farmers and of the common man. And she did a lot of speeches. She made a lot of speeches about the fact that government seemed to be too heavily involved in Wall Street and vice versa. That one hand was sort of washing the other, and perhaps there was some corruption there. Uh, and that maybe those two should be separate entities. She should have so formed the SEC, <laughs> but she didn't. The summation here is this. Well, how does Chapter 26 end? Well, after the Civil War, the Plains Indians very unsuccessfully resisted white expansion. Uh, we, um, we sort of ran them over uh, unjustly, but... Uh, uh, lots of warfare and um, negative effects here for the Native Americans, including a huge decline in their population. The frontier period closes. Land is given out, it's sold, it's done. There's really no more frontier. There's no unearthed or unexplored area within the continental United States at this point. Farmers in the West, they were victims of an economic revolution. So they mechanized farming, which is great. It's much more efficient, much faster, much better. But it is still difficult to farm when you are in huge amounts of debt, and that's what our farmers were faced with. And then the farmers are going to turn to political action in order to protest their plight uh, and try and get things done that way.